I wanted to talk to you about slope shading on CalTopo, um, specifically uh, slope shading based on an avalanche forecast. Um, as you go through this tutorial, uh, please go to, at least scroll to the end uh, to hear uh, a little bit about a, a warning about this, so uh, you get the warning. Uh, if you start feeling comfortable, oh, I can figure this out, just scroll over to the last minute or so so you can get my uh, final take. Um, I'm starting out here in Colorado, and I'm, I'm starting in the United States, um, but we're going to end up doing this in Canada as well. Um, and the reason why I'm starting in the United States is because CalTopo defaults to USGS, and when you're slope shading, all this green background uh, can be a little, uh, make things hard to see in your slope shading. So the base layer map that you decide to use uh, is up to you, but I prefer to use uh, this Forest Service Topo 2013. It covers most of the mountainous areas of the United States. Um, but it's a white base map. So the slope shading, uh, the slope angle shading, uh, really sticks out. Uh, so I would recommend at least trying this. Uh, once you build your slope shade, you can change whatever base map you want and just see if, which one you like, which one um, shows the, the features that uh, you prefer. Uh, some people, uh, even like, although in the United States it's not um, really great, is uh, the TF Outdoor um, sheet is more of a gray, uh, but it has sort of more ski area. You can see all the ski area uh, trails much better, um, but it's it tends to be a little busy. So whichever slope, whichever uh, base map you want to use um, is is up to you. Um, so anyway, that's the Forest Service, uh, the 2013. The 2016 Forest Service has quite a bit of the vegetation on it. Um, and it looks a little bit more like the typical USGS. For my Canadian friends, I want to go up to Canada because a lot of people um, don't think... Uh, CalTopo works that well in Canada. Now, obviously, the Forest Service Topo doesn't work, um, but oddly enough, the USGS pops up. And um, I'm not exactly sure why. Someday I'll figure it out. Ask questions. But if you scroll all the way out, you can see it doesn't cover all of Canada. It, it tends to cover from that whole western area of Canada that connects up to Alaska. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a planned invasion or something. And uh, over, you know, the first couple hundred miles all the way over to the Maritimes. So a lot of the mountains of Canada are covered by uh, this USGS base map. Um, we'll go back to Rogers Pass. And so what I want to do is slope shade based on angle and aspect. And I want to colorize those that slope shade, uh, also uh, relative to the avalanche problem. So what I want to do is imagine an avalanche forecast where there's a persistent slab on north-facing slopes in the alpine that's easy to trigger. Okay, so persistent slab, north facing slopes, in the alpine, easy to trigger. We also have a wind slab on east facing slopes at tree line and in the alpine. I have no idea if this is a typical forecast for Rogers Pass. I just pulled it out of the hat, so to speak. Um, 
I've skied in Rogers Pass, but it's been a long, long time, so I'm, I'm not that familiar with the terrain. But I thought it would just be a cool area and show my Canadian friends that this is available to them up in Canada as well. So the first thing I want to do um, to make the slope shade is click on Add New Layer and come over here, Add DEM Shading. And that'll pull up this dialog box. So the first thing I'll do is click slope and we know the 38 degrees is like the bullseye, right? So I'm going to go from 34 degrees to 42 degrees. And we know it's on a north aspect, so I'm going to go from northwest to northeast. And I kind of looked at maps and uh, satellite photos and pretty much figured out that um, tree line is, or alpine starts at about 6,500 feet. So I'm going to put 6,500 feet. Um, if you're actually in Canada, uh, that's roughly 2,000 meters. It's, it's 1,980 meters. Um, and it's, it goes all the way to the summits. Um, so instead of like calculating what's the highest summit in the area or whatever, you just go way over the top. I'm going to go to 20,000 feet. That way it'll cover all the summits. Um, so 34 to 42 degrees from northwest to northeast from 6,500 on up. I'm going to color those slopes red. So I'm going to add the rule. Now over here, because it was uh, likely to trigger, I'm going to colorize another section from 30 to 33 degrees, same aspect, same elevation, and I'm going to color those slopes yellow. Let's see if I can get a little bit brighter yellow. There we go. And I'm going to add that rule. So our next avalanche problem was a wind slab. And that wind slab was harder to trigger. So I'm going to go from 34 degrees again to 42. And the aspect was east. So I'm going to go from northeast to southeast. But the elevation has changed. Um, it's, it includes tree line. So instead of 6,500, I'm going to go from 5,000 feet to 20,000 feet. Um, because it's in tree line and in the alpine. If it were only in tree line, I could go 5,000 feet to 65, or I could be a little bit conservative and go to 7,000 feet um, and, and change those parameters. But seeing it's also in the Alpine, I'll go to 20,000 feet. And I'm going to change that color to blue. And I'll add rule. So over here you see the code. So slope 34 to 42, aspect from 30, 315 to 45. You can see where my cursor is. Elevation 6,500 to 20,000 feet. And that's the color. So if for some reason I want to modify anything, I want to change this to 33 and change that to 32 um, and that kind of thing, I, I can do that right in this box, right in the code. So there's no need to like erase it and add a new, uh, an entire new rule. I can manipulate it. One thing you will notice is 
I went from 34 to 42, and then from 30 to 33. I don't overlap the layers. If you overlap the layers, they'll get both colors. And so the yellow and the red mix together, and it just makes it, 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 it just makes it visually a little bit hard to discern what exactly is going on. So um, separate your colors uh, um, so that they're not overlapped. So now I'm just going to hit save. Um, I didn't name it. I should name it. Um, you you kind of want to name it. I'm going to name it based on the uh, date today. And hit save. So anytime I want to edit, I just hit the pencil. Obviously, the X will delete. You'll get a little pop up most of the time if you. There you go. And if you look at the map, you'll see it's colorized based on those parameters. Now, maps are always nicer when you can get a little hill shading. And so I'm going to hill shade this. Sixty percent works, and it takes a minute um, for CalTopo to hill shade, and now it's all nicely hill shaded. And so I have colorized the map based on the forecast. Now this digital elevation model shading will follow me wherever I go now on this map. So if I go back to Aspen, the shading will pop up. And I'll get to show you what that Forest Service 2013 map looks like in comparison to the USGS map. And you can see it's not horrible, but the yellow doesn't pop as much. Um, and you may choose a different color, um, a dark green or, or a purple uh, instead of the yellow to um, have it pop on that green if you want to keep the uh, vegetation um, that you get to see in the USGS. Um, there's also this map builder topo, um, which is a nice, a, a pretty nice map. Again, it has a lot of the vegetation. So whichever base map you want now, the slope shading will work, as well as the hill shading. So what's important to understand is, is the Rogers Pass forecast will be unique to Rogers Pass. Make sure you don't uh, build one of these and then just leave it up um, accidentally and start doing tour plans in a completely different forecast area. Uh, make sure that this is a specific forecast and you could even um, do something like this so that you know it's Rogers Pass. Um, and this forecast will only be good for the day. So now I can do a print um, and print out an area and that would be a geo PDF that can be put into your phone. Um, you can do all the things that you can do with CalTopo, like add a line. Um, if it's snapping to OSM, I'll just snap to none. So I could, I can add a line, up some steep terrain. That's probably not a very good line uh, from a ski touring perspective, but maybe up something here. Right, 
I know where my avalanche hazard is and I'll get a blue dot on my phone with the colorization. So now um, here comes the warning. The avalanche forecast is the avalanche, the forecaster's best opinion of the avalanche hazard in a fairly large area. Persistent slabs, wind slabs, um, those type of things um, are likely to be where the forecaster says they are. But it doesn't necessarily mean they're only where the forecaster says they are. Wind is notorious for having localized patterns because of the three dimension, three dimension terrain of the mountains and you get these different wind patterns. And so you can have a wind slab potentially on a slope that's almost or is as much as 180 degrees different than what the forecaster is expecting in a localized area. This colorization gives you a visual representation of the forecaster's opinion. Just because it's on a map now doesn't make it more accurate. It just makes your ability to see where the forecaster is expecting these problems to exist. It allows you to see it better. When you're in the field, you need to have, you need to keep collecting data and to some extent expect the unexpected. Look for the wind slab in places that it wasn't forecast for. Make sure it's not there. Uh, persistent slabs are much harder to, to see um, because it's a, it's a buried weak layer. Um, it's not a surface layer like a wind slab. You can, with a little bit of training of your eye and the right lighting, you can, you can see where the wind is low to the slope. So don't turn off your decision making. This is a planning tool. It'll help you navigate a little bit and it'll, it will at least highlight the areas that are the most likely. Now you notice I didn't go any steeper than 42 degrees. If I wanted to, I could have added like above 42 degrees and I could have colored it purple, like 43 to 50 degrees um, and colored it purple on those uh, aspects. Um, So you can colorize this the way you see it, the way you read the forecast, but it's just the forecast. It is not just because it's on the map doesn't make it any more reliable or definitive. It's a visual representation of the forecast. So that's about as deep a warning as I can go. I think this is a very useful tool, especially for planning. And for in the field, particularly when sort of the light is a little flat or it's a little bit difficult to see, uh, you're not as likely to bumble into uh, the specific slopes that are forecasted for. And I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial.